Hi everyone, welcome to VRSI Academy. So far we have understood about the placement stage related concepts and we have covered CMOS latchup and tap cell related concepts in detail recently. In today's video, we will be covering the concept of tie cells. An IC does not always require all of its input to be used. The inputs that are not used should always be tied to a single or stable logic state and we should not left the inputs floating because floating inputs always result in an unpredictable or intermediate logic states. And that unpredictable logic state is not desirable and it is a major issue that designers tries to eliminate always. Here we have taken the CMOS inverter layout to understand why we need the tie cells. If you see here, this is the gate and gate oxide of this is actually thin and sensitive to the voltage surges. Some processes does not even let us connect the di gate directly to the power rails because since any surge in input voltage of this will be leading to the damage of the gate oxide. For example, an ESD event that can damage the gate oxide. And that is why if we want to connect any floating input to the VDD or VSS, we can't connect it directly to the VDD rail or VSS rail. We need some interface in between and that interface is our tie cell. We use tie cell instead of connecting directly to the VDD or VSS rail because the gate will not be uh, able to handle the surges if any surges comes up. Let us try to understand the tie cell working in schematic and layout. This is our CMOS inverter layout and let us also draw in parallel a CMOS schematic for understanding the concept of tie high or tie low cell better. So this is our VDD and this is VSS and this is our PMOS and this is our NMOS side. This will be our source of PMOS. This is drain connection. This is drain terminal. This is source terminal for NMOS. And in a tie high cell, what we do is this will be our connection for gate. So this gate is connected like this here as you can see. This is our gate terminal for one NMOS and this is for PMOS. This is the gate connection for VDD. It will be tabbed from here and VSS will be provided from this line. And now what happens is our gate is connected properly. What we do for a tie high cell is we will tap the output from drain terminal and we will create a short of drain and gate like this. Because of this drain gate short, it is now acting as a PN junction and this connection is known as popularly like diode connected transistor because now this is actually acting as a diode and this gate source is now, sorry, gate drain is now shorted. With this, NMOS will always be in a saturation region. So NMOS will always be in a saturation region and because it is now in saturation region, what happens is your PMOS will be gate of PMOS. Gate of PMOS will always be low. And since it is low, you will get a high because now it is an, a standalone inverter of PMOS and it will always give you high output. So this is why this is called as tie cell, tie high cell. This is your tie high cell, which will always give you high output. Now let us draw one more CMOS for understanding tie low cell. In that you will have one PMOS again here and one NMOS like this. This will be your VSS. This will be your VDD. And what happens is you will have a gate like this. So this is your gate terminal. We have source, drain and drain source. This all we know. Now what happens is in the Tylo cell. So we are now trying to understand Tylo cell. In Tylo, what happens is you will have a drain gate short, but it will be at the PMOS side. So you will have a drain gate short, but this time it will be for PMOS. So DG short will be there, but it will be for PMOS. What happens is when you have a drain gate short, now it acts as a PN junction, which is forward bias. So this is always give you a VDD at the gate. And that is why it will always be in a saturation region. So concept is similar, but now it will apply for PMOS instead of NMOS. So here NMOS was in saturation here. PMOS will always be in saturation region. Now because your PMOS in saturation region, what happens is your NMOS, gate NMOS 
so gate of nmos it will be now connected to directly from this side to vdd so it will always be high because of this gate of p gate of nmos is high you are essentially tapping the output from the drain terminal of the nmos so since nmos is an inverter now and a standalone inverter with high input it will give you low output so that is why it is a tie low it will always give you low output we hope we are able to convey the concept of tie cells that is all for this video we will come up with more concepts in further videos if you have any questions you can ask through the comment section please do like share and subscribe to the channel thank you